What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're doing something a little different today. A subscriber reached out and uh, need some help with their uh, Dodge Ram 1500 axles bad. So uh, we're here in the junkyard and uh, we're gonna help them knock it out. So uh, uh, let's find this bad boy and see what we got. All right, I see it down here on the left. Ram 1500 Hemi. I see the wheels are on, so that's a good sign. That means maybe the uh, axles should be should be in there. So, oh yeah. Okay. All right. That's good. That's good. Oh, someone's got this wheel off. All right. That's good. Looks good. All right. Let's get this gear selector off and then we can shift it into neutral. And let's check this thing and make sure we got a posse here. Okay, I got the tire off. Let's uh, give it a spin. Oh, look at that. Nice, we got ourselves a posse. Looking good. All right, uh, you can help me? Yeah. Okay. Basically, I'm gonna just try to drag it out and then help me lift it into that, if you can. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, you wanna grab this side and I'll crawl underneath. I don't yeah. wanna, I don't wanna bend the, uh, the, the backing plate. The back, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you ready? Just yeah. go a little bit at a time. Ah, oh, Jesus, yeah, it's mother. Heavy. It's really heavy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go another one foot. Okay, that's good, good. Yeah, that's uh, no joke, huh? Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah, it's bending a little bit, but what can I do? Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> One, two. Yeah, there you go. One, two, three. Okay. Ah, yi, yi. Uh, oh. How do you know it's good, this one? Well, I just spin it. And start, there's no really way to know. I mean, I could pop the rear cover off and take a look, see if the gears are worn. But, I mean, it spins around nice. It sounds good. Yeah, it's, it's not making noise or something like that. No, I don't hear anything. So, all right. Okay. You ready? Okay. Here's the big one. one two, three. Oh, okay, hold on. I gotta get it. I gotta get sideways. Holy mamacita. Okay. One, two, three. Jeez. Ay, ay, ay. Real heavy. Thank you, sir. No joke. Okay. Like this? That's fine. Yeah, see? Okay. Listen to that. Oh, Sounds beautiful. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah. Alright guys. Now we got it out. Now we gotta just take it over uh, to Anthony's house and uh, we do the same thing. Drop his out and uh, drop it in. So Oh, damn, that thing's heavy. At least at home we'll have jacks, right? All right, I popped the cover off just to take a look. Oh, wow. It looks very nice. Very nice, very nice. 
So guys, uh, we're on our way to uh, our subscriber's uh, house, Anthony, and uh, we got all of our uh, stuff here. We've got the diff and uh, our pressure washer. We'll get it cleaned up before we put it in. So let's head out. He's about an hour away from us, so uh, we'll head out and uh, go check it out. So we're just pulling up here. Looks like we got the truck in the driveway, so let's check it out. How's it going? What's up, Jared? You Anthony? Yes, sir. All right, man. Nice to meet you, man. Thanks for reaching out. Thanks, Appreciate sir. it. Appreciate so we got a little Ram truck here with the rear axle problem, huh? Yeah, it's the diff. Sounds like the diff's going out. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Let's check it out. Let's uh, let's go for a spin and see what it sounds like. First step, uh, 15 millimeter. You're gonna take off your drive shaft. Okay, if you had a buddy helping you, it works out good. Just uh, have them put it in neutral, and then, then you can spin it and keep working the same area. Okay, neutral. Okay. gonna set this out of your way for now all right okay so uh, we're gonna take the calipers off next so in order to relieve a little bit of the pad pressure you can just take a plain tip screwdriver and then just push them back just a little bit you'll feel it just a little bit is all you need now your calipers loose and uh, we'll take this off with the 21 millimeter the bottom one you can get with uh, with the gun the top one the leaf springs in the way so And then since you push those the pist the pads back, you should be able to wiggle it off. Okay? So we don't get any a brake fluid. I don't want to unhook this yet, so I just put a piece of tie wire, get that out of our way, um, because uh, uh, we need to um, I don't I don't want to make a mess. Uh, you can take the rotors off next because they're just sitting there. Set those aside. We're going to use those on the new axle. Okay, so after you got the caliper off, you got the rotor off, uh, we're going to take uh, three of the four nuts off of the U-bolts. So same 21 millimeter you use for the caliper. So I'm just going to leave one uh, just on a little bit. You'll see the, the axle start to move down a little bit. So we're just gonna leave it and then go finish uh, unhooking the brake line underneath. And then we'll come back to this once we have the jack under the axle. All right, so next up, we're gonna take uh, the e-brake cables off. So you can uh, uh, just, there's a little bit of a, a clip here that you can push back. Sometimes you need some uh, needle nose or I have a little pair of, uh, vice grips. Once you get it started, you pull it a little ways through the hole, and then I like to do is uh, lock it down on the beginning of that spring. Lock it down on the beginning of the spring, and then you can use two hands to pull, and then the cable will slide through the opening. If you get some of the spring in there, then it won't slide through. So you unhook that. When, um, you don't have quite enough room to get it out because it hits the axle, so you just uh, pull it this way a little bit, towards the back and then just remember that's what you're gonna have to do when you put the put it back together so unhook it do the same thing on the other side and uh, now we got the e-brake off so we got the other uh, brake line off okay on uh, the passenger side but it's attached to this bracket so we want to pull it off of the the axle and uh, then we can just uh, uh, feed it through and then just get it out of our way. Okay, so then you take your 13 and we're just gonna take the nut off uh, for the bracket that holds that uh, e-brake cable and it actually holds a, a piece of the brake line. So you kind of need to um, uh, spread it open a little bit, get it out of the way 
and then now your uh, emergency brake cable and wire harness are free from the differential out of your way. So next step is you want to get your uh, 12 millimeter uh, flare nut wrench and we're going to take the brake line that's uh, feeding uh, the rear brakes. So we're going to just take it off at the bed. So you get your flare nut wrench and uh, a little bit of fluid will start to drip out but uh, you can... Uh, Okay, once you break it, then just switch to uh, your open end. Makes it a little bit quicker. Okay. Okay, so then uh, I just get a, a plain tip. There's a little clip on the back. Um, that's uh, holding it to the frame. Okay, and then now it's free. So you can just pull the little uh, dust cap off the bleeder, off the caliper, that way it's not uh, dripping, and then you can have a cleaner workspace. Okay, so uh, next is a shock, same 21 you've been using. Okay, and we do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so next step is we're gonna uh, pull off these uh, brake lines to the caliper. Have your bucket underneath because it's gonna it's gonna drip out. So gives us a good opportunity to uh, you know when we bleed the brakes, get all this old fluid out, and uh, at least the whole rear section will be nice brand new fluid all the way through out the caliper. So. Okay, so we have our jack under the uh, the axle, and we have the weight off of it. So we're just going to take out the final uh, nut for the other U-bolt on each side. Okay, so now we got both sides, and if this is a if you got somebody to help you, it, it's uh, better. Then um, you can uh, you know make sure it balances there. And we're going to slowly come down with the differential. Okay. Support it. Okay, coming out. Okay. Okay, so uh, while we have this one, before we put it in, it's easier to work on it uh, outside of the truck. So we're gonna mark our, our uh, pinion nut here so we can uh, put it all back together the same way we took it apart so as long as you retighten this back the same number of turns all the way uh, after you replace the pinion seal then um, you don't need to worry about anything else all right so we're gonna get our 32 with our impact and then we're just gonna pay attention to the number of times it spins around okay one Two. Now we get it by hand. So then we got three, four, five, six, not coming off yet, six, and seven, seven, right there. Okay, so seven, and it, the ending was here. So when we start, when we put it back together, we're gonna to start here and then go all the way back to this line. Okay, uh, next is, this should just pop right out. May, if yours has a little corrosion or something, it might be stuck. You might need to get a little uh, you know, hammer, tap it, but most of the time, they're pretty easy. It comes right out. And this is the seal that we wanna get out and replace while we're in here so we don't have to worry about it. So what I do is, this seal has a little bit of a lip, so what I'd like to do is just get, uh, you can get a plain tip, try to get under the lip, try to walk around it. Okay, so just work around it, free it up a little bit, and then you can kind of get under the lip usually and uh, get it to pop out. Okay, 
clean out that a little vacuum and uh, we'll put the new one in. I'm just gonna clean up the edge, make sure we've got a nice smooth surface to work with. Okay, it's good. Okay, so we're gonna put a new seal in. I got uh, just a seal from O'Reilly's down the street. Um, there's the part number for you guys. And uh, looks good. It's gonna be a nice fit. And so let's put a little, always like to put a little, um, RTV on there just to help seal uh, the metal part because really, you know, there's really nothing there, so. Okay, I'm gonna lay the seal on there. And I just got a piece of, uh, I got a piece of like uh, two and a half inch pipe that I had in the garage. Um, just use that to uh, get it started. Just make sure you're going down straight. Okay, just make sure you're down all the way. Wipe off your excess. Okay, we got our seal in and we're ready to reassemble. So I like to just put uh, a little bit of grease on our spline here. Um, just put it in here is fine. And I just throw a quick little bit on there just so when we put it in, the seal has a little bit of lubricant. You can also use the, the diff oil as well if you have your bottles uh, handy. Um, and then, we're gonna make sure we get our spline lined up to where we were before. And we're gonna insert it. And there we go. Now we have our nut. We said we're gonna start it here and we should be going seven turns. Okay, so that was, uh, now we're going one, two, three, four, five, okay, five, coming around for six, and then the seventh one is gonna be delicate with our gun. All back just how we were. Okay. Feels good. Very nice. Okay, so we're just gonna pull the real cover off. Um, uh, there was a few bolts missing uh, from the junkyard, so we'll uh, we'll just take them out of our old one. But you know they already they drain everything at the junkyard, so there shouldn't really be anything in there. Okay. okay, so we'll just clean this up. We'll get a little blade. They used, obviously, RTV. Uh, we're gonna use a gasket like uh, was done originally, uh, but we'll get these parts cleaned up and uh, show you the reassembly. All right, so it turns out we don't have the, the right gasket. Um, none of the stores locally have the gasket, so we're just gonna use RTV and uh, put a bead around uh, both pieces and then seal it up. I'll show you guys the torque sequence. Okay, we got both sides uh, lubed up. So we're just gonna put it on. Okay, we're just gonna snug them all up. Get your 13 out again. All right, and then 
get a little closer. Uh, so then uh, I'll post this, uh, I'll do a screenshot of this, but basically this is your uh, uh, torque sequence. Uh, so I'll put it up on the screen for you guys. Uh, torque is gonna be uh, 20. So we're set to 20. Okay, so one's over here in the top. We got two down here. Okay. Why do we decide to go with the 20 instead of 30, Jared? Well, the manual originally called for 30, but uh, I heard a lot of stories of guys that snapped the bolt head off uh, going to 30. So the new philosophy is leave it at 20. You got a good seal. We got a lot of uh, RTV on there, so I think we'll be fine. Won't be a, an issue. So um, now it's time to throw it in the truck. So let's go. Okay, so we just used uh, two jacks. We used one in the middle to elevate it, and then we put a little smaller one just to keep it from tilting forward. And then once we get it up, then we're able to uh, get those uh, U-bolts started. So, um, and then you just uh, make sure that you got it straight. So make sure the uh, that it's, as you tighten it, this gets flat. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so then you just uh, take your 21 again, and like I said, just make sure that your uh, your your flush right here, this line right here where my finger is. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so we got, uh, we just gotta have the brake line and then we just need to put our little clip behind there. So you gotta get it started. Okay, got your clip on. And then, take your little cap off that you were using. get started by hand. Okay, so then you just get your uh, 12 millimeter open in wrench. And you tighten it up. Then your last one, get your flare nut wrench. Snug it down. Okay, brakes line's done. Okay, I'm just hooking up that uh, breather line. It just clips to the frame there, as you see. So, easy. Okay, so we're gonna take off our little clip here. And remember, we wanna get... We wanna get our, our brake line back inside there. Uh, actually, first is the, the hard line. Hard line goes first, then the emergency brake cable second, okay? Okay, then we have our electrical plug. Wanna get that plug back in. And then this just clips on right here, holds that. And then you're going to 13. Okay. And yeah, there's a little hole, just line it up with the hole. Okay, there you go, it's good. Get it started, and then I want to just support the, the outside of the spring here. And using the spring uh, like that, give it a little tug. And then it twists off and then push it through. That's it. Okay, so then we're just gonna snug up both of the shocks. Okay, just get them snug and we'll come back in a minute and torque it. Okay, uh, so then we're gonna take our 21 and we're gonna torque our U-bolts here. These are torqued to 110. So I just do a couple turns, crisscross. Make sure they're snug. Okay, 
Same thing on the other side. Okay, so these, we're gonna torque these down as well. These are at 100. Okay, do the same thing on the other side. So just get your blue thread locker and you wanna do that on the, uh, the drive shaft bolts. Get those prepared. And the drive shaft's easy. It'll slide in and out of the transmission a little bit. So you'll be able to uh, maneuver it and then rotate for your first bolt. You can just rotate it and get your first bolt hole lined up. Okay, and then have your buddy uh, put the truck into neutral so you can rotate things. Okay, in neutral, spin it around, get your other one started. Okay, so then we're gonna get out the torque and we're gonna do this to uh, 85. Okay, neutral. Just stay in the truck, we'll go neutral park, neutral park. You have to just tap, tap the brake pedal, just barely touch it so the shift thing will unlock. There you go. Right. Neutral. Okay, park. park. Okay, neutral. Park. Neutral. Park. Neutral. Just double check the last one. Then we went all the way around. Ne uh, park. Park. Okay. Drive shaft's done. Okay, so uh, because uh, we're transporting it, the the uh, backing plate's going to get bent a little bit from the weight. So just get some uh, flat jawed. Uh, you can use uh, these channel locks, or if you have. Uh, a crescent wrench also works. So you just want to bend it back so it's straight and you got clearance for the rotor that we're going to put on next. Looks good. Looks good? Yep. Okay. Okay. Slide your rotor back on and then we can jump up, unhook your caliper that you had wired up. Spread your pads back out. Sometimes they like to close up on you. Okay. And then we're just gonna line up, line up our bolts. So then just get your caliper bolts. Same thing like you did with the drive shaft. Just put a little of your, your thread locker on. And then you just have to wiggle it a little bit and find the hole for uh, the carrier bracket. Okay, get your 21 millimeter and the torque value is 100 on these, so. Okay, and the bottom one, you can come underneath. You got a little bit of room. Okay, do the same thing on the other side and your, your brakes are back installed. Okay, so just pop off the cover, just a little pry tool, it's just rubber, comes right out. And uh, on this uh, Ram, it holds uh, two and a half quarts, so we're using the 75 140, and it already has the friction modifier added already. So if you're using regular uh, Mopar or regular uh, uh, differential fluid, then you need to make sure and add the, the four ounces of the friction modifier. So this one, the Royal Purple already has it in, so we're just going to put in our two and a half quarts and we'll be good. 
Okay, so then on the last one, we're just gonna put in half. And it might start dripping out, although we have the truck at a slight angle because it is jacked up in the rear, so we're just gonna put our half in and we know that two and a half is good. Yeah, see it's already coming out. Okay, pop your cap back in. And there you go. Okay, so just uh, top off your reservoir uh, before you start. And then um, if you got an automatic bleeder, then obviously you can hook that up. But uh, we're doing, you know, minimal tools. Have your buddy help you. So you can kind of overfill it a little bit now. And then um, we'll uh, go start on the passenger rear. Okay, all right, so we're gonna start on the uh, passenger side, so just pop your little dust cover off, and then I'm using uh, a flare. Uh, it's an 11 millimeter, okay? Um, I can't find my piece of clear tubing, so we're just gonna uh, put our, our bucket underneath. And so get your buddy in the truck, and all he has to do is uh, follow commands. Can you follow commands, Anthony? I don't, he didn't answer, so I don't know. It's not looking good, guys. Um, all right, you ready? Uh, yes. Okay, you in the truck? Where are the keys at? You don't need the keys. You don't? No. Okay. We're not turning the car on. Push the push it push the pedal to the floor. Okay, pedal up, down, hold it, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, I got fluid. Okay, up. One more time, down. Ooh. Still got a little bit of air. Up. Down. Up. Down. Okay, all right, this side's good. All right, so you do the same thing on that side. Um, in the, in the, right after the first one, go top off your reservoir again since we lost some fluid. Okay, so just the final, just give it a nice uh, brake clean. All your stuff, because you kind of dripped a little fluid everywhere. Clean it up a little bit. And if you want, I mean, this is a good time if you want to do your, uh, your, your pads, rotors. It's a good time you do that. Uh, we're going to save that for another video, but we'll show you guys uh, that in the near future. So just clean it up. Put your uh, dust boot back on, and then we're ready to throw the wheels on. Okay, so last step, uh, we just want to torque uh, the lug bolts. So Dodge says 130. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks again for tuning into the channel. Um, it was pretty cool for Anthony to reach out. He uh, he reached out on Instagram, sent us a message, said he really could use some help uh, with this uh, with the project. He doesn't know how to do the mechanical stuff. He's like the construction guy. So this is the guy that I'm going to use and hit up when uh, we need some construction stuff. But the Ram truck came out great. And uh, um, thanks again, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, Derek. Yep. See you guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Hit that little bell so notifications come on, let you know when we upload a new video. We'll see you on the next one.